Zuerst sagte er das Platzen der New Economy Blase voraus, dann warnte er vor dem überhitzten Immobilienmarkt. Er ist Wirtschaftsnobelpreisträger, Professor in Yale, Erfinder des Schiller KGV und er ist Bestsellerautor. Sein neues Buch, Narrative Wirtschaft, kommt nächste Woche in den Handel und ähm, erscheint dann auf Deutsch. Und jetzt haben wir ihn im Interview. Welcome, Professor Schiller. Hi. Um, what a great timing. Markets are down and everybody seems is wondering if this is the beginning of the end or just another chance to buy the <laughs> stock market. What do you think? Beginning of the end sounds a little bit strong, I think. <laughs> We've been through pandemics before and uh, they can be wrenching, uh, but it isn't the beginning of the end. Okay. And you said um, this year in Davos, which, which is just two months ago, um, you said the next crash could be massive. On the other hand, you also said, I don't see any signs for, for a crash to come right now. Did that change? And are we talking crash right now? It has changed. And there is a chance of a crash right now. Well, we've already seen something like a 20% drop, almost. Uh, and it could, uh, it could continue. Yes, we, we have a scary situation emerging, and that can have a psychological impact on the market. What, what do you think what is going to happen? I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> These are hard to predict. Uh, it, it involves predicting an epidemic as well as predicting the markets. I would say the two together, we have a co-epidemic. That's a term used by epidemiologists when two different diseases interact with each other to produce uh, a stronger outcome for both of them. So we have an epidemic of the disease and we have an epidemic of fear about the disease. And the, it goes beyond, the epidemic of fear goes beyond fear of the disease itself. It's also fear of chaos, uh, a, a loss of confidence in our government and institutions because it failed to protect us from this kind of crisis. It's, a, it's, it's, it's a difficult thing to forecast. Although it's, it's kind of a strange, um, I mean, maybe we, uh, it's, it's to, to do the cross connection to your book, it's kind of strange uh, because it seems like it's also the coronavirus is a narrative uh, in a way. And um, people are kind of arguing right now, um, is it just a kind of a flu or is it something really bad? And, where states should really uh, isolate themselves from each other to, to try stop spreading the disease. Um, you, you think it's exaggeration? Yeah, the worry is that, that there's kind of an exaggeration? The 1918 flu epidemic, nobody knows exactly how many people died from that, but worldwide, it might have been something on the order of 50 million people, which put it at bigger than World War I by a, a wide margin. Uh, so uh, let's hope it doesn't come to that. <laughs> But we don't know that it won't. Even though the death rate uh, is not that high, it's very contagious. And it's hard to stop the contagion. It's especially hard to stop it with this disease because it uh, is contagious bef before many symptoms are shown. So you don't have an opportunity to quarantine people as effectively. So uh, it is potentially a big crisis. Potentially, you say, so it's not in, the, you think uh, a 20% drop down uh, at the stock market, uh, it's not, it doesn't mean it's, it's the risk is already priced in the market. Uh, well, there is a question. Yeah, is this a buying opportunity Or is this a, uh, exactly. a, a step on the way down? Uh, and it's hard, hard to say. In 1918, the flu epidemic did not affect the stock market very much. The stock market went down somewhat later after the initial shock. But it, uh, and there was a recession in 1918. There was another recession in 1920-21, but that wasn't... Uh, connected in most people's minds with the flu epidemic. So we don't have a record like this. In fact, mm -hmm. the stock market now is reacting very strongly to uh, the, the uh, corona epidemic. And that's something new. So it's hard to know where it will go from here. 
it depends on the narrative uh, is epidemic as well, how that pl plays out. Right now, it's scaring people a lot, uh, but it could scare them even more if they start seeing people dying in greater numbers. You have warned that stocks are a little bit overpriced for years. And then we had all these events like Brexit, uh, the protests in Hong Kong, the trade war and everything. And the market always just reacted with little dips and then people started buying again. Now we have uh, like this almost 20% setback. So um, you think this is just a kind of, of the market getting a little bit more normal after the euphoria? And if we, if we have right. um, like yeah. a Spanish flu, then it would be really a problem for the market, if I get you right? It could be. I'm sorry that I can't forecast better. These are uh, big unknown. We can't even forecast the epidemic well. You know, they, they try. They, they, epidemiologists have a problem forecasting these things because the contagion rate can change through time. It depends on people uh, and the recovery rate that can change. The disease mutates. So it's very hard for them to forecast as well. But I, I think that it is... Yeah. Uh, you know, the market is still, in the United States, the CAPE ratio, cyclically adjusted price earnings ratio that I've been using to judge the height of the market has been uh, very high. And, and now it's still just high, uh, not, not very high anymore. But still, there, there could be a, a further drops in the market. And have you, have you been surprised that we, uh, even after Corona, um, we had the first uh, outbreak in China and then the whole situation uh, also got worse in, in Europe, but uh, the markets were, were still had, uh, hitting new all-time highs, although there was also already that outbreak in China. Um, that, which, which was probably pretty unique. And then we saw this very fast 20% decline, um, which is, um, I heard somewhere, it, it's, it's almost second to none. It was only, only such a fast move after um, the, 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 when the Second World War started, World War II. Um, yeah, so I guess it's, it's maybe because of that, that you have so much problem predicting or, or finding anything where you can grab onto? It's hard to predict. Right now, the public attention is focused on the coronavirus at an immense level. It's, on, it's constantly talked about. You know, it's, it's a situation where people are thinking, I might actually die from this. <laughs> Maybe it's unlikely, but the, uh, the narrative has gotten strong enough that people are actually fearful of dying. What about the, the other narrative, um, which is uh, QE is going to save the market? Uh, do you think quantitative easing is going to be the solution once more? I think they'll have to turn to that. Uh, and the question is how much it will work in the present circumstance. They, of course, central banks don't have the usual tool of cutting interest rates, at least not, not very much. Uh, and so they may have to go to uh, quantitative easing. Let's hope it helps. But the, it doesn't really solve the basic problem that people are scared. They're afraid of dying. It's like a wartime feeling that people are living under right now. You said when recession comes, this time it might hit really heavy. Um, you still think so? Or is it possible that people are going to be like, okay, okay we have this decline now, it's um, over maybe in three months, maybe in six months, and we, go, we are going to try to rise with a kind of a new power. I mean, we already see in, in China some kind of, um, um, yeah, things getting back to normal. Uh, Yes, I hope, that's, I hope that's what happened, and it could happen. I just don't see how anyone can accurately forecast right now. Mm. For, forecasting requires, you know, weather forecasters have uh, over 100 years of data on storms. There's lots of storms in lots of different places. This is a planet-wide pandemic that's happening. It's, it's rare 
and it interacts with all of our institutions and all of our narratives. It's very hard to forecast. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. <laughs> Well, but of course, people are, are now uh, turning to experts like like you, Professor Schiller, because you predicted, um, I mean, the new economy bubble, um, the house pricing bubble. But yeah, I guess it's like you said, it's, it's hard to predict um, what is going to happen when you don't have any historical or almost no historical data to compare to. Right. That's I guess that's what you're saying. Yeah, I think that people have to be warned against getting overconfident in a buying opportunity position. Some people might well think that, yes, this crisis has been overblown and we will be back up shortly. So this is a wonderful buying opportunity. Maybe it is, but I don't think you want to put your life savings all aggressively into this buying opportunity because it could be just the opposite. Would you buy at least some stocks right now? Uh, yeah, I suppose a diversified portfolio. Uh, uh, yeah, I wouldn't say to exit completely. Um, we talked about a lot about narratives right now. Uh, I, one thing I wondered when I, when I read your book was, um, do you think it's really true that the market is still driven so much by emotions in a time where most of the trading is done by machines and hedge funds with very strict rules? Okay, I think the, these machines are trading with each other in the background. And I think that uh, uh, we haven't reached a point where the dominant force in the market is machines. It's still people. People program the machines, and I, I think that we haven't we haven't reached that yet. Maybe sometime in the next century, we'll we'll see the market being dominated by uh, computer decisions. But right now, they are they are not. Often, uh, it's said uh, one of the biggest mistakes by retail traders is um, to to be carried away by their emotions too much. Mm. On the other hand, you say one should not underestimate the power of narratives. Um, so isn't that kind of a contradiction? I guess you, <laughs> you say people should learn to use or to read the emotions and to put that into their trading. Right. Yeah, I'm less, uh, I'm less into this buy and hold uh, uh, position than many other uh, pundits are. I think that uh, this might be a time if you are heavily exposed to the market, to withdraw somewhat. Even though uh, still, still, you would still sell if you were yeah. too much exposed right now? Okay. Because you uh, see that yeah, the risk might be bigger than the potential profit from, from where we are standing. That's right. Uh, but it's, it's, you know, it's a hunch and it's a guess. That's why I don't want to go to extremes. Mm. Uh, I, some people may be in a, a, a strong let's buying opportunity mode, and that might be a mistake. So you would probably just start buying when the market is really depressed and 40 or 50 percent down, or you don't buy at all and you just watch <laughs> it. Well, in uh, 2003, when the market, or 2002 or 2003, when the market was uh, uh, at its bottom, I had reduced my holdings substantially. But I don't know how to time the market accurately. You, you know, you can get out too soon or too late. You can get in too soon or too late. It's a difficult thing to do. So uh, many people shouldn't be so concerned to, to do that. On the other hand, I don't think that it's futile to do that. And uh, at, at times like this, I would say that someone who is strongly into the market the stock market is uh, would be well advised to curtail holdings in the market okay. because there is a chance of substantial further drops. In the narratives book, the last chapter is about uh, the connection between um, stories going viral and you use the epidemic model to explain um, right. how these uh, stories spread kind of like a disease. Uh, so it almost seems like a bit um, foreshadowing again, when because now we have this coronavirus and, and it's a big topic. 
And um, so I wondered, do you already know, do you have another book inside you, um, another topic <laughs> which you are working at right now? Uh, I don't have another book yet in mind. But, you know, some of my, there's some continuity between my books. Uh, Irrationale Überschwang, if I said that understandably, Wonderful. was a book, uh, the new book, uh, uh, Narrative uh, Wirtschaft, uh, is in some way the, uh, up, updating and a continuation of the idea then that I had 20 years ago. Uh, it is uh, that uh, ideas are contagious and they spread like viruses. Ideas mutate just like viruses do, and they suddenly get more contagious. Uh, so big events in our history are typically caused by mutated narratives that swung into, a, uh, into an epidemic. So, for example, the uh, Internet boom became a narrative for the yeah. stock market in the 1990s. People had stories about pioneering companies uh, that uh, were exciting, and it drove the market at the time that we were entering a new millennium. Everything seemed so positive. Then in, uh, in, the, in the 2000s, just before the financial crisis, the narrative was about real estate speculators who were so-called flipping houses. They were uh, buying and selling houses rapidly and making a lot of money. That was another new narrative that drove the market to excesses. And now in the... In the uh, Uh, in the year 2019, last year, there was the uh, Donald Trump narrative, again, about a brilliant businessman who uh, uh, is a model for all of us. That And was it worked. the thought at that time. One, one has to say it worked, right? It, it worked in driving the markets up to record levels, yes, without being a, a, a supreme statement of confidence in everything. It was not a statement of confidence in the government. You found a new, a new felt. Uh, the idea was you wanted to find, you wanted to be led by people who uh, were uh, brilliant in business. Uh, that's that's why Trump got elected. Even his supporters will say he has rough edges. You know, he can be insulting. He can be uh, uh, angry. But we want someone like that, a tough business person. Uh, who uh, makes tough decisions, who looks at the markets and thinks clearly about them uh, and doesn't, uh, doesn't fall back on any traditional wisdom from 100 years ago, who thinks now. That's, that was the mood that we had just last year. And it may continue. Uh, I don't know. But we, now we have a new and different scary narrative that's distracting our attention from it. For the first time in years, in the United States, I hear more about some other news topic, the coronavirus, than I hear about our president, Donald Trump. 